Hi everyone, uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how to generate some of the molecular fingerprints that are available in RDKit. RDKit is a popular open source cheminformatics uh, library. So I will use this library to generate molecular fingerprints. So the first thing is, what are molecular fingerprints? Molecular fingerprints are just a type of molecular descriptors. They encode molecular fragments or molecular features in the form of a binary digit. When you say binary, which means two, either zero or one. If a feature is present, it is represented by one. Otherwise, it will be represented by zero. Just as simple as that. Uh, so if you want to perform computation, you need to have a numerical representation of molecules. Usually, we say that if a bit is on, okay, that means that structural feature is present and which is represented by one otherwise if the feature is not present it is represented by uh, zero now let's see uh, an example this is a structure of aspirin aspirin has say for instance three important uh, functional groups here is an acid functional group it has an ester functional group and it has an aromatic ring or a benzene ring say for instance this bit is assigned for carboxylic acid so since there is a carboxylic acid this bit is on if the carboxylic acid is not present say for instance this bit should be zero in this case you have an ester functional group so this bit is on because of the presence of the ester functional group in aspirin this bit is on because the benzene ring is present in aspirin this on bits represent uh, these structural features if these structural features are not present say for instance these bits will be off so once we have these molecular fingerprints we can use these molecular uh, fingerprints to perform uh, structure search say for instance or we can use these molecular fingerprints to develop predictive models like quantitative structure activity relationship or quantitative structure property relationship models so as i said molecular fingerprints have used to search molecules such as structure substructure or similarity search for virtual screening of compounds from compound databases or they could be used for machine learning like a quantitative structure activity relationship or quantitative structure property relationship in this notebook i will show you how to generate uh, these uh, six molecular fingerprints that are available in our decade so the first one is molecular access system keys uh, the other one is avalon fingerprint atom pair topological torsion fingerprint morgan fingerprint or circular fingerprint and our kit fingerprint our kit has many fingerprint types there is a link for the documentation you can uh, take a look at this documentation but in this case we'll be focusing on the top six uh, molecular fingerprints so the first thing we need to do is we need to import libraries uh, we need pandas uh, numpy pandas is to read uh, csv files numpy is to convert uh, rd kit objects to numpy arrays uh, c1 is just for plotting these are the rd kit libraries we need and the last one is to hide warnings so now let's run this cell just by pressing shift plus enter so now we imported the libraries we need uh, a data i got this data from my publication so there is a link over here so let's uh, import uh, the the data so we use uh, pandas here to read the csv file right so this data has uh, only two columns the smiles columns and the uh, energy gap uh, uh, column it's just two columns these are smiles and energy gap this energy gap is obtained by density functional uh, theory uh, so you can read this paper for more information but what we need for this purpose is uh, smile strings so uh, as you can see here we have only smiles uh, we want to use um, molecular graphs to get the molecular graph rd kit has um, a module that you need to import which is this one okay so panda tools so once you import this uh, you have to use this function add molecule column to frame so you need to pass the data set this is a data frame uh, and also you need to pass uh, the smile column which is this one right and then uh, you need to give the new column so in this column it will uh, display the molecular graphs so let me run this uh, cell and let's see okay so now we have the structure of the molecules so these are the molecular uh, graphs 
so we usually familiar with uh, these structures and the smiles right when you learn chemistry in class say, for instance uh, we usually draw these structures in books uh, or in uh, classrooms to calculate uh, molecular fingerprints we'll use their molecular graphs not the smiles if you want to display the structure and uh, some label if you need to import uh, this module and then uh, we can use draw moles to image this function so this part will display the structure of the molecules and uh, this one is uh, the label which is the energy okay let me run it yeah so you can see the structure as well as the energy this is nice so now let's calculate molecular fingerprints the first one is the marquis fingerprint there are 166 keys and they do have values this is implemented in rd kit there is a, a link over here so you will see there are keys and the values so say for instance if you look at 10 this key is on it contains a group to a or alkaline earth metals if 12 is on you will have this uh, so-called transition metals and so on so these are the 166 keys and their values now for this example i'll use the first molecule this is the first molecule so it contains trifluoromethyl group benzene ring and uh, methyl so this is para trifluoromethyl toluene toluene is a common structure we'll use this structure and then let's calculate the marquis fingerprint so the first thing you need to do is you need to import this one okay once we import this we have to use this function gen marquis and then you need to pass the mole file this one okay so this is a variable so we can store it over here we can display the fingerprints using the numpy array so the numpy array will display the on end of bits so let me run this by right, just shift plus enter so if you count this if you take the length of this say for instance okay len len m case right so the length is, is 167 but there are only 166 uh, keys uh, in general pretty much every programming language starts from zero that's why you need to have zero index over here so the one index starts from here so if you start from that up to this it should be 166 so all these 166 keys have values the first index will not be used because it does not have any key value definition so we can uh, take a look at the shape so this is just uh, there are 167 rows this is just a single column all right so if you look at this there is one over here there are two ones here that means this key is on this key is on right this key is on because it is one which means there is a feature which is detected in the structure so if a feature is detected in the structure the bit will be on otherwise it will be zero there is a way to access uh, the index of this on bits there are two ways the first option is you can use a tuple you can pass the variable and then you can use get on bits to access the indexes of the on bits to find the lengths just you can use a len function okay so in that way you can access the on bits this is one way so these are the indexes of the on bits 42 106 107 and so on another way of accessing the indexes of uh, this on bits is using a numpy numpy non zero gives you the indexes of on bits and also you can count them using count non zeros so for this purpose we'll use a tuple instead of numpy why is this 42 is on 106 is on let's see what 42 represents this key is on if there is fluorine so the molecule contains fluorine which makes sense the other keys let's see the 162 163 162 yeah if there is aromatic this key will be on if it is a six member ring this key will be on so obviously the molecule contains a six member ring a benzene ring and uh, it is aromatic so that's why the two keys are on this marquis fingerprints are used for substructure search so to calculate the avalon fingerprints first you need to import uh, this module pi avalon tools and then using this pi avalon tools you have to use a function get avalon fingerprint so you need to pass the molecular graph 
this is a molecular graph and also here you need to pass the bit size usually you start from 512 so this bit size is to the power of something in this case 512 is to the power of 9 if you take to the power of 10 it becomes so 1024 you need to pass these two arguments the first one is a mole file the second thing is you need to pass the number of bits once you do that it's the same as what we did before you need to assign a variable and then you can see the bits so the index it starts from zero and it stops at 511 similarly you can access the indexes of on bits using tuple and then get on bits the variable name and get on bits you can get the indexes of on bits to get the lengths you have to use the len function let's run this so these are the indexes of uh, on bits there are 39 bits that are on for uh, the structure the other fingerprint uh, that is implemented in rd kit is the atom pairs fingerprint you can read more about uh, these fingerprints using this link similarly for uh, this fingerprint you need to import this module then using this module you have to use a function get hashed atom pair fingerprints as a bit vector this is a function so similarly you need to pass uh, this argument the mole file then you need to define the bit size very similar to a value fingerprints it looks like this there are on bits right so to access the on bits you have to use a tuple and then the links function these are the indexes of on bits and there are 42 bits uh, that are on the other one is topological torsion fingerprint for both topological and atom pair you need to import this one once you import this you can use for both of them you don't need to import it again and again so you have to use get hash topological torsion fingerprint as a bit vector uh, similarly you need to pass the molecular graph and then the bits size okay to get the on bits and the lengths you have to use the tuple and len function so there are 12 bits for morgan fingerprints you can uh, render the bits that's really uh, additional functionality which is implemented in our kit when you use uh, morgan fingerprints you have to use all came and then get morgan fingerprint as a bit vector and then you need to pass the more file in addition to that you need to pass the radius this is a radius usually you'll use two or three and then the bit size we saw this in addition to that you can get a bit information you can store this bit information using this dictionary okay let me run this similarly you can get the own uh, bits as well as the links in addition to just uh, simply uh, accessing the the indexes of the own bits it is possible to display what fragment makes a bit on so we can display the the feature that turns the bit on so to do that uh, you have to use this draw morgan bit then you have to pass the molecular graph and then the, the bit which is on this is the index of the bit and then you need to pass that uh, dictionary the on bits this one you can uh, display the fragment so the meaning of this is um, the bit at 129 is on because of this fragment right so you can't even access what fragment makes a bit on or you can display the features that turns a bit on so you can display all the fragments there are 16 bits that are on okay using this function you can uh, display all the fragments all the fragments can be displayed like this and then uh, this could be in interpreted as uh, say for instance 129 this is the index of the bit that is on this bit is on because of uh, this fragment uh, 186 is on because of uh, this fragment uh, so you can interpret it like that so this is really uh, an excellent feature which is implemented in rd kit the same is true for uh, rd kit fingerprints they are very similar you can display the on bits as well as you can render the bits or you can uh, display all of them so, so this only works for uh, RD kit and uh, Morgan fingerprints. Unfortunately, it does not work for the other fingerprints. Okay, so so far we have seen how to calculate a molecular fingerprint for a single molecule. So, if you have uh, many molecules, uh, you can still calculate uh, their molecular fingerprints. So, um, say for instance, if you want to generate uh, Morgan fingerprint, Avalon fingerprint, and topological torsion fingerprints. 
you can define a function like this so in this function you need to create uh, this mpt listers this is for morgan fingerprints uh, balloon fingerprints and uh, topological torsion fingerprints are mpt listers then you can create a loop and then you can uh, pass the mole file and calculate the fingerprint of each molecule and then append that fingerprint into the corresponding mpt list right you use this to append it over here uh, this one in this case it will append to the Evan fingerprints in that list and topological torsion fingerprints so uh, we can append them to this mpt list and finally we can uh, return this list as a uh, numpy array and uh, see, let me run this so this is a function definition so if you call the function you just pass up the structure file which is very quick and then you can see the shape right so what does this tell you the we use 200 molecules this is a bit size in the rows we have uh, 200 molecules in the columns we have 2048 2048 columns right so you can easily calculate uh, molecular fingerprints using a function if you want to calculate only for one type of fingerprint you can define a function like this using a list comprehension you can uh, calculate all the fingerprints and then you can return the fingerprint as a number array and uh, you can easily generate uh, molecular fingerprints of your molecules this is uh, very useful i prefer to use functions because functions are reusable the best way to learn is just uh, you need to practice it right so i have a practice problem over here uh, so in this practice problem uh, try to write a function that uh, can generate atom pairs and marquee fingerprints for many molecules not uh, just one molecule but for many molecules so in that case you should be able to write a function so the second part we'll, we are going to see molecular similarity one application of this uh, molecular fingerprints is to search for similar molecules from databases one of the most commonly used similarity metrics is the tanimoto coefficient there are others but this one is the most widely used in chemistry so how do you calculate the tanimoto coefficient of two molecules say for instance a and b tanimoto coefficient is the number of elements in the intersection of two sets divided by the number of elements in the union of two sets okay so this is intersection divided by union let's use this example to explain it further a is salicylic acid b is representing aspirin so uh, these two structures have common structures they have benzene ring there is acid functional group right there is acid functional group this one is a phenol uh, but this one is an ester so that's the difference so they have uh, common structures so if you calculate the fingerprints they do have common uh, fingerprints so the green one shows you the common fingerprints which means they are found both in salicylic acid and aspirin right so this 13 shows you the number it's just needs to count the number of common bits that are on so in that case there are 13 bits so this is the intersection so these ones are only found in uh, a which means in salicylic acid and these red ones which which are 11 these are only found in uh, b the intersection which is 13 divided by the union which means 5 plus 13 plus 11 okay so if you do that you will get the tiny motor coefficient uh, but if you look at the literature, uh, maybe a little bit confusing. It says C. C is the intersection. A, the number of elements in A, plus the number of elements in B, minus intersection C. C is the intersection. So when you use this formula, you will count the intersection twice. That's why you need to subtract it from the total here. Practically, how do you do this? So first, let's see how to calculate the Tanimoto coefficient of aspirin in salicylic acid. This is a molecular graph, aspirin. Uh, for salicylic acid, uh, let's convert the smile string into a mole object, a molecular graph, right? These are the two structures. Uh, what we'll do is we need to calculate the, their fingerprints. So let's calculate fingerprints. In this case, we'll use a Morgan fingerprint. So the first one is for aspirin. The second one is for salicylic acid. Uh, let's sort them. So if you look at this, this is for salicylic acid. 456, 456. Okay. 
they are the same which means uh, these two fragments should be the same 650 650 these two fragments uh, should be the same and so on so let's see say for instance what is this 456 let's use for um, salicylic acid uh, using the morgan uh, bit rendering right you we saw this before so draw morgan beads salicylic acid and then this is a bit right the own bit and then uh, we need to pass that uh, bit information here for salicylic acid okay because the function needs uh, that information yeah this is a carboxylic acid uh, so this bit is on because of this carboxylic acid uh, let's see for uh, aspirin yeah the same carboxylic acid but the orientation is a little bit different otherwise they are the same right this makes sense so how do you get the intersection of the on bits we have to use this set this is equivalent to the mathematical uh, set so if you have intersection you have to use end so if you use this set and pass the number of on bits here the salicylic acid on bits and then aspirin on bits if you take the, the intersection intersection is end in this case that gives you the intersection the length you can get the length function you can use the length function to get the length so let's see these are the on bits that are found both in aspirin and salicylic acid so that's the meaning now the union is represented by this or this an or symbol so you, you simply use the same thing set salicylic acid but don't get on bits or set aspirin fingerprints get on bits and this is means union so if you use union it can get the length to find the tiny motor coefficient you have to take uh, length of the intersection divided by the length of the union you will have 13 divided by 29 then let's see the value okay 29 then the value is this one this is the tiny motor coefficient of these two molecules so we don't need to do this manually uh, our decade has already a function to do that this is just to show you how the tiny motor coefficient is calculated otherwise you don't need to do that uh, there is a function in our decade that function is found in data structs fingerprint similarity so you have to use this function and then you need to pass the fingerprint of the two molecules this is aspirin fingerprint for aspirin and fingerprint for salicylic acid so in this metric you need to uh, you need to pass this data struct tiny motor similarity if so if you say this uh, you will get similar to what you got here right so if you look at this value and this value they, are, they should be the same our kit has other uh, similarity metrics like uh, dye similarity cosine similarity to use them just you need to change this uh, metric into that similarity cos that similarity and then uh, you'll get the results so if you say enter you can easily calculate them so one of the purpose of uh, calculating molecular fingerprints is to find similar molecules to the query or a desired compound let's say for instance we have aspirin is our query compound so this is our query molecule now we want to search similar molecules to aspirin from our data set say for instance in this data set we have 2904 compounds so we want to measure the similarity we need to calculate the similarity of uh, aspirin with these molecules so the first thing you need to do is we need to calculate the fingerprints of all molecules okay so to do that you have to use all chem get morgan fingerprint as a bit vector this is a list comparison then you need to pass uh, the mole file uh, this is a uh, for loop so you'll calculate all the uh, fingerprints of the molecules just to see how many are there you just use a len function so you, there are 2904 compounds and we calculated their fingerprints so our goal is to calculate uh, tiny motor coefficient of aspirin against each of uh, these compounds to achieve that uh, you have to use this uh, list compression first you have to use data structs and then fingerprint similarity so this is your query molecule which is aspirin in our case then we need to pass x x is for each molecule for each molecule because this is a loop 
So the loop goes from uh, the first molecule to the last molecule and it will calculate the tiny motor similarity of uh, the query molecule with each of the uh, molecules in the data set. So once you calculate that, uh, that will be stored in this, this variable, that is a list. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, what does it look like? Let me see. Okay, so this is a list, you see. So these are the values. So we can put these values into a data frame. They are included in the data frame. So we can sort them based on their tiny motor values, tiny motor coefficient, which means in decreasing order. By the way, this uh, similarity matrix, tiny motor similarity value, goes from zero to one. Basically, if the two molecules are identical, the tiny motor coefficient should be one. If they do not have any kind of common structure, the tiny motor coefficient should be zero. So let's see. We sorted them here. The sort values just it sorts the tiny motor coefficient values in decreasing order and then let's see how it looks like so in decreasing order this is one it's the same as a spring right then this is the next uh, similar molecule right so the last molecules they don't have any similarities so the value is zero so uh, you can put them like this even you can uh, filter with a certain threshold value uh, in this case, for instance, let's say that uh, we want molecules whose tiny motor coefficient is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. If you want that, uh, you can use this criteria and filter them. You'll get only uh, molecules that are greater than 0.5, you see? Okay, so you can easily filter them like this. So this is a very useful functionality. So uh, even you can display them in image and their values using uh, this moles to grid image function. Very convenient to look at the structure as well as their values. Okay, so this is one application of uh, fingerprints. We use them to search molecules, similar molecules. Say for instance, if you are working on a drug discovery project uh, and if you have a very potent molecule from your uh, biological assays you can use that structure and search molecules from public compound databases so you'll use some similarity matrix to find uh, similar molecules to your uh, target molecule so that is one application of molecular fingerprints the second application of molecular uh, fingerprints is for compound clustering let's take uh, 20 compounds from the data set and then so we calculated the molecular fingerprints of each molecule against uh, the rest of the molecules so it looks like a matrix let me uh, let me run this cell and show you what it looks like so what we did in these two cells is that uh, we calculated the tiny motor coefficient of this molecule against uh, each of the molecules Similarly, the tiny motor coefficient of this molecule against uh, each of the molecules. So you'll have this kind of matrix, right? And that's good, but uh, we need to cluster them based on uh, certain similarity. Uh, there is a way to do that. Uh, there is so-called uh, taylor Bitna clustering. There's an algorithm which is implemented in Radicate. So um, I used that uh, function here. Uh, and I'll show you how it works. So this is a function, right? So the function needs uh, fingerprints of all molecules, and then you need to pass a distance uh, threshold. It will give you the cluster number, and then you can put that cluster into the data set. Let me see, let me show you first. Let me run this. So what I did is uh, I run the function, and this will return the cluster ID of each molecule. So how many clusters are there? based on 0.4 uh, threshold yeah we have uh, 2128 clusters unique clusters we can display only uh, three columns we'll put the cluster id in a new column cluster number and let's see how it looks like okay so we have included uh, this cluster id the cluster number using cluster id can group them by cluster number and you can count the structure how many structures are present in each cluster so uh, if you run this yeah the top cluster contains 24 compounds and then uh, it decreases the other thing we can do is we can sort them we can sort them based on cluster number and uh, display them and let's see how it looks like using this function okay so in the first cluster, these are the molecules that are in the first cluster, right? 
So it looks like kind of uh, para substituted benzene, right? And the cluster two, you see some aliphatic chain, right? So this is cluster three, which is kind of para substituted uh, with the nitro group, I guess. Yeah, so uh, you can easily uh, group them based on their uh, based on their cluster number. So this is a very useful uh, utility which is found in Eradicate. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you is um, you can even uh, filter molecules based on the presence of a certain fragment. Let me break this one into two. Let me break it here. Let's assume that we want to uh, filter compounds that contain some sort of acid functional group, say for instance. So the, uh, we want to uh, filter molecules containing uh, acid functional group. Uh, to do that, what you can do is you have uh, a data set. The data set, uh, you have to pass the, this uh, fragment. It will filter only these structures, right? It can highlight it. Right, so you can easily see the acid functional group. So it will pull molecules that contain uh, acid functional group. Maybe it may pick uh, ester too because uh, this is not very specific. So um, in summary, we have learned uh, how to calculate molecular fingerprints uh, using, you know, Marquis, Avalon, Atempere, Topological Torsion, Morgan fingerprints using Eradicate for single as well as uh, many molecules, right? We also saw uh, how to calculate the Tanimoto coefficient and uh, the taylor Bithner clustering. Hopefully in the next video, I will show you how to use these molecular fingerprints to develop machine learning models uh, using a chemistry benchmark data set. So stay tuned. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe this channel. Thank you.